So you want to generate more appointments so you can stop being broke and retire your parents and then move out to Dubai and get hose on your yacht. Okay, or maybe that's not your story, but the point is you want to get more appointments. So this video is going to show you my exact process and how I'm able to get more than 10 appointments every single day using this strategy. Okay, now just a heads up, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to play a video of the training that all of my setters go through that work for my company that they're using to generate the appointments for themselves. So I'll see you in the, the rest of the video. All right, so welcome to the overview of the actual training, what you're going to be needing to do on a day-to-day -day basis, how actually our process works and why we're able to achieve predictable and solid results from all this, okay? So there's a few different sections in here. Um, this video is just gonna go over the first one. There's gonna be multiple videos within these documents. Um, obviously you just click on the, the video link here, which obviously I need to film these right now. Um, but this is quite comprehensive, pretty much goes over everything that you're gonna need to do to actually set up the process and then manage it on a day-to-day -day basis. Some of the specific things, like the actual scripts that you're going to be using um, and everything like that is going to be given to you at a later date. Um, but everything that you need to do to get set up and all the actual theory and the the how you can how you can actually do this to a high level and how you can see amazing success with these processes. That's what we're going to cover here, as well as some of the the background behind how we actually create our scripts um, and things of that nature. Okay, so for this video, I'm just going to go over the cold calling process overview, um, and then obviously in the next videos we'll go over everything else. So. Cold calling is obviously a complex task. However, we can break it down into six simple steps. Um, and it says five here, but it's actually six. Okay. So what we need to do to make cold calling work is to make all the steps of cold calling work, right? So if we can get all these six steps down, then we can make a lot of money. Okay. So the first thing that we need to master, which isn't really a skill, but it's getting people to pick up the phone. Okay. So most people are not going to pick up the phone. When I first did this, right, my expectations were super high. I thought at least like 50% of the people were going to pick up the phone. That is not realistic whatsoever. Okay. You are probably going to get a pickup rate of 15 to 20, maybe 25% if you are lucky, right? But if you're getting less than 15%, then we have a problem that we need to fix. Okay. So here are the steps that we take to make sure that we have at least a 15% pickup rate. Um, however, we're striving to get about 20% pickup rate. Okay. So every single day we call from 8 a.m. to 9 a.m. Now to make most use of this, obviously, because there's only one time in the day where it's 8 to 9 a.m. We do this, we call it in multiple different time zones. Okay. So all across North America, we're going to be calling from 8 to 9 a.m. So we're going to call 8 to 9 a.m. at 8 to 9 a.m. Eastern time. We're going to call from 8 to 9 central time when it's 10 or 9 to 10 Eastern time, right? And we're just going to take out all these four time zones and we're going to call from 8 to 9 p.m. in all those time zones so we can maximize that kind of golden hour that we found for most industries. Um, obviously, it does differ um, depending on the industry. Um, however, 8 to 9 a.m. is generally that sweet spot. So another thing that we do to make sure our pickup rate is as high as possible is before we give you all the leads to actually um, go ahead and call we're going to put them through a a clear out system which essentially takes the numbers tests whether they are from a mobile number a toll-free number a landline right and we're only going to call the mobile numbers okay and that's going to obviously help us with our pickup rate as well because when especially during that 8 to 9 a.m period people are probably on their way to work driving to work just got to work um, and that's when we're going to be calling them before they started their day um, and a lot of the times that might be in the car that might be as they're getting ready to leave the house or something whatever right um, but that's when people are going to be having access to their mobile phone and going to be able to have the time to pick it up right so reaching decision makers right once we have this 15 to 20 percent um uh, pick up rate right now we need to actually make sure that the people that we want to be picking up are the ones that are picking up okay so we cannot book a meeting if we don't have the decision maker on the line there's no point in scheduling a meeting with someone who can't actually make a decision on the call because that is the whole reason why we are booking this call right is to eventually sell them on our services and help them out with their whatever it is um that they can help with with their marketing right so since we are using clear at phone and only getting mobile numbers, it is very, very unlikely that you're going to get a gatekeeper unless like, yeah, if you have a mobile number, 
very low chance that you will be getting a gatekeeper. So we can pretty much avoid this problem altogether. However, there might be the odd time where like it scrapes an employee's number, or, like a VP's number, or something like that, right? So sometimes you might not get the decision maker, but most of the time you should be getting the decision maker, right? And if we're not, then obviously that's a bit strange. Um, so then that's something that we'll figure out, right? Um, but if we don't have this ability, or if we're calling an industry like gyms, for example, you're not going to have access to most people's mobile numbers. So in that case, it might it may be beneficial to to call those landlines. Um, in which case, we'll need to learn how to get past the decision maker. Right. So if we're cold calling mobile numbers, our pickup to decision maker reach rate should be about eighty percent. And if we're calling all numbers, like including mobile numbers, landlines. Uh, toll-free numbers, all that kind of stuff, it's probably going to be about 40%, um, just because getting past gatekeepers is obviously a skill in itself, right? So once we actually get to those decision makers, we need to actually pitch them, right? We need to convert them from the decision maker picking up the phone to us pitching them to our services, right? Now, if we just go in and pitch them, they're going to be like, I did not opt in for this and just hang up, right? So we need to actually get them to agree to 30 seconds of their time. All right. So before we start pitching, right, we have to convince them that we're worth 30 seconds of the time, right? Because they're a business owner, they have a lot of shit to do, right? So we need to actually convince them that we are worth their time, which isn't always easy. Okay. So that is essentially what the goal of the opening line um, is, right? So the only way that we can actually get them to agree is by pattern interrupting them or like giving them some incentive to actually want to hear us out or else they're just not going to care because you're going to sound like every single other person who's ever pitched them which probably is going to be a lot of other people right so we can use humor we can use abnormal tonality we can use an abnormal fact there's no like really rule to this um but obviously getting creative with it um and just being different from everyone else and there's no like blanket script that you can kind of just like take and use right obviously i'll give you guys stuff um to be able to to use but there isn't like a one size fits all kind of thing right it's just like using these fundamentals and these foundations to actually make sure that you are that you're breaking those patterns um and interrupting um interrupting what they're used to hearing right so some examples that i just wrote while i was making this document like john this is a cold call want to roll the dice or like Hey, John, this is a cold call. Want to give me 30 seconds or hang up and then decide, right? So obviously this is not, does not make any sense, uh, but everyone says, do you want to give me 30 seconds and then decide or hang up, right? So we just like switch it and they're going to be like confused. And they're going to be like, what are you talking about? And then you can just have a little laugh, right? And then you go for it. So it's all really just about being different and being unique rather than being like, I can guarantee you blah, 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 blah. That'll come later, right? But we want to actually like, make them think that this is not just like their standard cold call that they get five times a day about some 15 year old trying to pitch them like some stupid guarantee right we need to actually trigger something in their brain that they're like this is new let's hear it, right that's the, the whole goal of this okay so but at the end of the day though at the end of the day though these could all work these could all fail it completely depends on the tonality you use because it doesn't matter what kind of script you have if you're speaking like a robot it doesn't matter. It's not going to do anything. Okay. So you have to actually, and this is a skill that you're going to develop over time. Um, and it's going to help you in sales as well is actually changing your tone dependent on what you're actually saying, right. To, in order to actually convince someone to take a certain action. Right. So we want someone to obviously take a certain action from not being interested to being interested in hearing, um, our little 30 seconds. Right. So we have to use a, we have to use a different, um, you have to use a different tone that most people do and that actually makes sense right so in terms of our pitches we want to try to pitch at least 50 percent of decision makers we speak with this could even be like 40 percent um if you're less than 40 percent then we have some work to do um and obviously with tonality and everything like that it may take some time to get to this number right um but this is what we we want to achieve right if we're doing less than that then we have some work to do okay now number four obviously this is the very important um this is very important right booking calls okay so booking calls has three variables that contribute okay so this is essentially when you're converting someone from pitching them all the way to actually saying okay this is worth 30 minutes of my time let's schedule next week tuesday at 9 a.m right 
Um, so tonality is going to play a massive part in this. This is going to be the longest um, conversion stage and part of the whole process. Um, obviously, the script that you're pitching them with and your objection handling skills. OK, so here is how we can maximize these three different variables to actually achieve massive success when we're pitching these decision makers. So once again, tonality is something that just develops over time. OK, so you can speed up this process by like watching YouTube videos of people cold calling. And, but mostly it's just going to be doing it yourself, putting in the work, practicing, and you're going to get better just by nature of repetition. Okay. So the pitch script is something that is going to be different, um, niche by niche and industry by industry. However, the general framework for how you want to pitch something goes as follows, right? So your recognition of a problem in their specific industry, your solution to their problem explained at a high level like you're explaining it to a child, right? It should be very easy to interpret and you should use statements relating it to things that they're already familiar with. So if you're talking to someone about search engine optimization, you don't want to talk about how you use all these like different keywords and like whatever kind of like tech stuff because they don't care. They don't even know what you're talking about. Um, so if you're like explaining some woo-woo thing, like they're not going to give, it, give you your time because they don't even know what you're talking about, right? And then obviously, the end result of your product taking full effect, right? They don't care about your ads, right? They don't care about your cost per mill. They don't care about your CPL. They care about more money in their wallet, okay? So that is what you need to pitch, right? The ads are a useful service only because they help bring more money into the person's wallet, okay? They're not useful because they have a low CPL. We don't care about a, use, a low CPL. We care about the most money into this person's bank account with the least amount coming out, okay? And obviously CPL has something to do with that, but you need to explain this at a high level, okay? So here's some contrast between a shit pitch and a good pitch, okay? So this is the bad one. So I've noticed that most realtors aren't getting enough leads right now. Because of this, I decided to help them with my SEO services so that they can grow their business. Is that something that you think could help right now? Now, this is just, I want you to think about every single time that you've received a cold email on search engine optimization, right? Like the amount that people hear this service or that, that hear this word, it's like another one of those things where you're just falling straight into the trap of saying this exact same thing as everyone else does, right? If you're selling SEO, you do not even want to use the word SEO because every single person in the world has heard it. Most people don't know what it means, and they automatically associate it with like some random dude sending them a cold email, right? So here is a good way to position that, right? So in the current market, I've noticed most realtors in the Miami area are struggling to get listings because of current market interest rates. Basically, what I've developed is an online web system that basically casts a net over a 25 mile radius, making it so that every seller in the area who searches up the word realtor cannot contact any realtor before seeing your name first, which is going to land you an extra two to three deals every single month on average, which would obviously skyrocket your bottom line. Is this something that you think might be able to help you out, right? So the difference here, right, is we're not using even the word SEO. We're basically telling them what we do, describing what SEO does, right? It's essentially going to put you at the top of Google, right? And this is where it's it's kind of says here, this is like the Google Maps search engine optimization kind of stuff, right? So casting a net over a 25 mile radius, right? And this is like something tangible here, right? Like every seller in the area who searches up the word realtor cannot contact any other realtor before seeing your name. That is something tangible. That is something that everyone can actually understand and kind of have a grasp on how it works, right? And then obviously focusing on the end result here, of two to three extra deals per month on average right so it's not like grow your business right this is actually like something tangible something that they can understand right grow your business could mean like 50 cents into your wallet or it could mean like fifty thousand dollars um into your portfolio right like it's you you have to make this tangible so the other person that you're actually talking to can understand what kind of results you're going to be able to bring them right so Objection handling, right? This is the third one. This is another huge skill that's going to take time to develop. However, the main contributor of your success outside of that is going to have scripts 
for the most common objections, right? So if someone says they're not interested, you should already know exactly what you're going to say before they even say it, right? You're not there because you're going to hear I'm not interested 800 times every single day, right? Obviously an exaggeration, um, but you're going to hear this so, so, so often. You should know exactly what to say before they even say it, right? If someone says, what is the price? You should know exactly what to say. And the answer is not what the price is, okay? You do not tell them the price before they book or else they're not going to book, okay? Because they either think it's going to be too high too because they don't actually understand the service. Um, and obviously, people book because of curiosity, but that's all of the topic, right? So you should already know exactly what you need to say before the objection comes up because you're going to see these objections now or like all the time, right? So you should already have something ready to go for when you hear that. And it's the exact same thing with sales. Like when you're on a sales call and someone has the objection, it's like, oh, I thought it was a done for you service. And maybe you're doing it like a done with you program, right? And then you have you need to have these objection responses ready to go, okay? Um, and then some metrics here, your pitch to booking rate should be at least 20% or higher, right? This means for every 60 to 80 dials or so, you should be booking at least one appointment okay now number five getting the prospect to show up okay so you can book a million calls but if you if no one shows up it doesn't really matter right so from here on it should be the closer who takes the reins and completes the following steps because you need to kind of bridge the gap of unfamiliarity between the prospect and the closer right because before now it's just been the setter talking to the prospect so we need to kind of transfer that familiarity um, and we need the closer to actually start kind of building a relationship with the prospect, okay? So I have a before the call standard operating procedure um, that you can go through if you'd like to, right? So this basically describes everything that you need to do to make sure your, um, your show up rate is at a maximum, right? You can easily get over an 80% um, show up rate using these, using these systems all the way from like, like you can move your show up rate from like, 65 percent to 80 percent like just with this and obviously that just means more income um for itself and everyone's happy right so it's very important that you follow this um if you are closing right um this is going to massively increase your income um you can go through this on your own i'm not going to read everything um in there however the, with with that process combined with our automatic sms follow-up sequence on high level that should result in approximately a 75 percent or higher show up rate okay 75 percent should be the minimum um, but obviously it depends on the industry right so essentially the high level sms automation is supposed to make it look like we are manually texting them okay so we do this by asking them hey did you find the zoom link in the automatic email that was sent right we send them a reminder as if it is us right so like hey are we still good for tomorrow uh, at this time right you have that sent out like a, a day before right so they're going to actually think it was you that sent them that and they're going to feel appreciated because they think we're spending the time to actually follow up with that lead um and they're going to feel bad right if they miss the meeting so number six this is the most important lever that you can pull right so if you have all of these and they're working like perfectly you could have everything fall into place but if you make one call a day it does not matter right? Even if you make 10, even if you make 50 calls a day, you're still not going to see good results, okay? By far, the biggest lever you can pull is the amount of dials that you input into the system, okay? As Alex Ramosi said, volume negates luck, okay? So if all else is tied and you make more calls, you will do better, okay? If you make 50 calls a day, you're not going to get anywhere. If you make 500 calls a day, you are going to be untouchable, okay? If your buddy is twice as good as cold calling you let's say he calls for every 100 people he calls he gets four people to book let's say for every 100 he calls you make you only get two people to book but if you make 300 calls a day and he only makes 100 guess who's going to book more appointments and guess who's going to make more money it's you even though you're worse and by nature of doing that you are going to become better than him very very quickly okay so this is obviously like this is by far the most important thing okay you will be the better sales rep if you make more calls, right? You will make the most money, you will get promoted the fastest, right? That it's as simple as that. So we expect a minimum of 200 dials a day. However, if you really want to be great, if you want to take it to that next level, do 300, do 400, right? Push yourself to the limit and you will get the results that you want, okay? And you will get rewarded for your work. 
if you are the one who wants to clock out and finish your day right at 200, you probably won't last very long, okay? Cold calling is a gladiator pit. And if you are not strong enough to push through the difficulties, you will not survive long. But this is how you achieve anything great in life, right? If you want to be the best version of yourself, you cannot settle for mediocrity, right? You cannot, like, go to the gym, do, like, five push-ups, and then leave, right? You're not going to succeed that way. You cannot wait till January 1st to start working out, okay? It's ironic because it's the 29th and I'm bringing this up, okay? But if you actually want to achieve something great, you have to put in the work and you cannot make excuses, okay? But if you do, right, if you are the one that goes in here and makes $500 a day or $500 a day, $500 a day would not be that bad either. Um, but if you're making $500 a day, you are going to make a lot of money. Okay, you are going to reap the benefits of your work, but it's going to take some time. Okay, you have to be able to commit to the process for a long period of time. Okay, so that's my whole philosophy. Okay, take that as you will. Um, but this is essentially how you're going to succeed massively in cold calling. Um, and I will see you in the next video. We're going to show you how to succeed in our messenger and our Instagram direct message system. Um, which is also going to be a very, very, very powerful tool in order for you to get a ton of booked calls. Okay, so I'll see you there. Okay, so Instagram and Facebook DM process. Okay, so this system, I'll like kind of preframe this. This can work for Twitter. This can work for LinkedIn. This can work for anything you want. Um, I'm going to be going over specifically how to do this for Instagram and Facebook. However, if you want on your extra time, if you want to experiment with multiple social media, um, you can feel free to do so, right? You're going to get paid for the appointments you book and for the deals you close, right? So this is how it works, right? So cold direct messaging, honestly, is one of the most powerful tools that you can use. And when I was doing this um, with automation, this allowed me to book over 10 calls every single day, only with DMs on Instagram and Facebook, okay? Now, this would require a lot more volume than a human can produce um, normally, right? Um, however, once you actually get this system rolling, even if you're only sending 50 to 100 DMs a day, it's going to be so powerful. The conversion rates are going to be so high. like. This can, this has the potential, if you do it correctly, to make a lot of money and book a lot of appointments, okay? So, a lot of the time, it's overlooked, um, and it's actually quite simple. However, there's some certain processes that we have to actually make sure we have nailed before it actually works, right? Because if we're sending the same thing as everyone else, just like with cold calling, it does not work, okay? So, we have to make sure that we are unique, okay? So, here we have three steps, right? It's a lot more simple than cold calling. However, if we can make these three steps work well, right, we can make a lot of money. So here they are. Converting strangers into replies, converting replies into interest, and converting interest into appointments, okay? Now, I'll, I'll show you exactly what this means, okay? So converting strangers into replies. Yeah. So most people skip this step and try to convert strangers into interest. But here's the thing. Almost everybody else is doing this exact thing. Almost everyone is messaging people with a pitch straight off the bat. Like I can just pull up my LinkedIn and see like 20 messages of just like pitches. It's just gross, man. So all of these people, right? They're messaging people straight off the bat with their pitch. When a singular person is receiving a million pitches on Instagram or Facebook every single day, they automatically categorize them as the same, right? And this is the same thing with cold email, right? Their brain recognizes them, recognizes all of them as spam, right? Even if you have the best offer in the world, working for the best company in the world, selling the best product in the world, right? Even with, like it, it doesn't matter because you you look like everybody else. They're not even going to read your message, and if they do, they're not going to reply, okay? Because they're going to read the first two lines, they're going to be like, oh, okay, yeah, another one, right? So this is the part that we like. We we cannot look like anyone else. So they're going to ignore the message. So that's the first part. The second part is that we want to make it as easy as possible for them to reply. Okay. We do this by asking a question with a specific response that they could make about their business. Right. So an example, Hey John, how's the, how's the business going? You got any partners right now? Or are you flying solo? Right. This is what I initially, I don't use this anymore, but I used to use this when messaging people on Instagram. 
Uh, this got me an over 20% reply rate, which is absolutely like nuts if you don't know much about conversions. But a 20% reply rate is pretty insane. Okay. Or, John, is this the best place to ask questions? All right. So the key here is we're not like being salesy we're not being pushy we're just simply invoking a response from them but we're not invoking just any random response we're invoking either a yes or no question right or like something that they can easily figure out what to respond to so if you say like hey how's it going like no one no one gives a shit okay like if someone messages me how's it going or what's up it's like bro i do not care right i don't have the time for this kind of shit because i know what you're trying to do and like <sighs> I have too many people messaging me that to kind of start a conversation with everyone. Okay. So you have to make it super, super easy for them to reply. It's like, and not, and not obviously pitch them right off the bat. Okay. So those are the two things, right? Like I said, I've achieved over a 20% response rate with this message on Instagram. Okay. However, I'm not using this anymore because I share it with other people and then it gets oversaturated. So that's basically what happens okay so i've already ran campaigns i i'm just reading the same thing okay once they respond i would generally ask them um a business related question right so i would say hey great you respond or i wouldn't say that i'd say like for the for the first message for the example right how's the business going going in front of right now they would say like yeah it's going great i would say that's awesome here man um do you mind if i ask you a partnership based question All right so most people like I found that 80% of people that I actually ask this say yes. One, because it's very easy to say yes to. And two, because I'm not saying want to hear my pitch, right? That's what they don't want to hear, right? They don't want to respond to something that's asking, like, like they don't want to do a favor for you, right? The only reason why people respond to these messages, like where I'm asking for a partnership based question is because they see it as a new opportunity because most people aren't asking that right and this is as a partnership right they see it as something that could have a potential benefit for them so they want to hear more right they don't associate a pitch with being a potential benefit for them even though it, it is right it can be um they don't see it that way so we need to actually create some incentive and some desire for them to respond um positively to that right and now they've essentially given us, have given us permission to pitch them, right? And that is what we're actually trying to get, right? They have given us their interest. We have converted them from being an absolute stranger on the internet to someone who's like actually interested in what we have to say, which is exactly what we need, okay? So another way that we can invoke replies is by leveraging the first strategy of standing out um, and then sending them voice notes with permission to ask a business related question, right? So this is more direct response. However, it uses that, um, that theory of like people of like standing out, right? you most people are not sending voice notes. Most people, well, I mean, on, on Facebook, people send videos all the time now because Charlie Morgan started something and now everyone sends videos on, on Facebook, right? Um, that's a whole other story. But most people right now are not using voice notes. And now I make this video and hopefully it doesn't go viral because then everyone will start doing it, right? Um, I'm also posting this on YouTube if you're watching this um, for your train, right? Um, but this is, it's a, it's a very untapped um, way of reaching out to people. And the amount of positive replies you're going to get is a lot more quality and it is a lot more like just you're going to get more volume with them, right it's not going to be quite as effective as asking them like that that first initial question and then asking for for permission to kind of ask a partnership based question right however the quality is going to be higher and you're still going to get a lot of them um we're going to go over this together right and then we'll discuss which is the which is the route we're going to take um for the specific business that we are going to be working with right whether that's myself or whether that's a different company right so we are yeah like i said we're going to go over this together okay so converting replies right now we actually have the reply we're going to convert this into interest in our product right and we do that through our pitch okay so the most most important thing here is that we're only looking to achieve interest right we don't need them to book a call we do not need them to want to buy we just need to achieve a very small level of interest okay we do this 
by presenting them with an extremely, extremely vague pitch. Okay, so we'd say something like, after they say, yeah, sure, I'd be interested into hearing a partnership-based question. So great, John. Well, my company, XYZ Company, helps ABC Industry achieve dream outcome, okay? And we've actually been looking at expanding our market into the Arizona area, and I, I came across your name. Would you potentially be open to hearing more info? Right. And you'd send this in a voice note form as well. This is also going to just break that pattern of seeing copy and paste and like pitches and categorize them, categorizing them instantly as spam. OK, so I borrow an example like this, would like, let's say for my company, right, um, probably wouldn't actually that doesn't really make sense because we don't the people we work with are digital. So this expanding into the Arizona area doesn't make sense. Right. But let's say we're working in the home improvement industry. And um, OK, so. Great, John. Well, my company, JKD Agency, helps home improvement owners increase the lifetime value of their customers. Uh, and we've actually been looking at expanding our market into the Arizona area. And I came across your name. Would you potentially be interested in hearing more info? Um, and again, right, like you can see the tonality I use there. It's not just cold calling. This is going to help you um, with speaking in, in any sense, right? Even if you're just having a conversation, um, if you're trying to invoke specific action from someone, it's very important that your tone um, is correct, right? So more of a curious tone at the end there um seeing like being like actually genuine um when you're talking to someone is super 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 important okay so that's essentially what you could do um as a pitch um for example right um i'll give you remember like i said i'll give you the, all the exact pitches that we're using for our specific business that we're going to be working with um in due time okay so the key here is that we're not asking you for a call right we're not asking book a call here because they've heard all that shit before okay so we're not going to send the same thing that everyone does right we're going to be different so we're just asking them if they might be interested which is a lot easier to respond to okay people are going to say yes they're interested like 10 times more than they're going to actually book an appointment when you send them a link right we don't want to do that okay now we need to convert the interest that they're going to give us from that into an actual appointment, okay? And I'm gonna show you how we actually do that. So we use a very powerful strategy. And like I showed you before, that strategy is called the phone. Mm. So after they respond to the message with anything other than not interested, don't care, fuck off, right? We're gonna call them, okay? We're gonna pick up the phone on close and we're going to give them a dial, okay? So. In your spreadsheet, in your tracking sheet, which I'm going to show you later in the video or later in <laughs> module six, right? Tracking. Um, now I need to find where I was because I have no idea. Um, right? You're going to have in your spreadsheet. You're going to have their phone number. Okay. You're going to have access to this person's phone number. Um, we get these these leads from Lead Swift, which I'm also going to go over in another module. Um, you get their Instagram, their Facebook, their phone number, all that good stuff, right? Um, and you can address. Um, any of their concerns, right? Confirm their problem, position yourself as the solution to their problem, um, right? And, and then book a call, asking them to speak with an advisor, right? So essentially, we're basically handling any objections over the phone instead of on text. This is going to work 10 times more effectively. You're going to get the pickups most of the time, right? If not, then I show you how to follow up with that as well. Um, but this is going to be so much more effective than talking on chat, right? And you're going to be able to book them directly yourself into a calendar rather than sending them a link um, and then forgetting about it, right? So here's an example script. So, hey, John, it's Josh Duke from JKD Agency. We spoke a bit over Instagram not too long ago. Does that ring a bell, right? They're going to say, yeah, or, or they might just say no. Um, but then, right, like when you're going in with this frame that you spoke already over Instagram, it's going to give you that level of like authority, not really authority, but it's going to give you that level of familiarity um, where when you're just cold calling someone, you don't quite have that, right? And this is extremely, extremely, extremely powerful. Um, and even if you run into a gatekeeper, like, hey, I spoke with um, with Joe over on Instagram, right? Um, we were talking about some, some personal related things. Can you transfer me, right? And if you've already been talking to them, um, you're going to have that position where it's like, okay, well, if you're already talking to this person, right? Now we can actually have a conversation. So most of the time you're not actually going to get rejected on these and they're going to be interested or like they're going to be okay with having a two-minute conversation because they have already replied with some level of interest or intent right even if it's just like how can you promise such a thing or like even if it's like anything other than like i don't care or leave me alone right they have some level of interest okay so then we call them now 
We ask here, is this a bad time for two minutes? If they say it is, then obviously you just say, okay, what time can I call you back? And then they'll give you time and then you call back, right? Most of the time they'll say, okay, sure, two minutes, whatever. So basically what you want to do here, I'm not gonna read through all of this, um, is basically you want to kind of tell them about your service. You're kind of reiterating your pitch again um, with a little bit more detail, right? Basically what you do, how you accomplish the result that you're claiming. Um, and then asking them, right, if that could potentially help them, because we don't want to say, like, leave it out, like, are you interested, right? We want to ask them, like, do you think this is something that could really help you? And if they say yes to that, well, then, like, if they're, if they think it could potentially help them, then, like, they're not going to not book a call because they already said they might be able to help them, right? We just have to convince them that it's worth 20 to 30 minutes of time. So, all right, well, then you basically tell them you're short on time, right? You want to wonder if, like, it's possible that, having a 20 to 30 minute conversation might be able to help them achieve the result that they want. And they're like, okay, yeah, sure, whatever. Obviously you may have some objections in here, which you're going to need to know how to deal with, um, which is going to be business um, specific, like depending on the, the niche or the industry that you work with, right? Depending on the company. Um, so, right, and then you just make a call. Uh, I don't need to go over this, but right, that's how you set the appointment. So if the call goes to the voicemail, right, we're going to follow up with them relentlessly, okay? All the specific scripts and everything we will go over in our first meeting where it is going to be dependent. Um, but here's a my reward of what the process looks like. And I'm going to explain this for you in depth here. Okay, I don't know why this shifted over there. So this is basically the process. We convert them from stranger into interested into a appointment set. Okay, so we ask for their permission to ask a business related question, right? Using a voice note. Um, and then some of those people are gonna be like, okay, sure, whatever tell me and then we give them our super vague pitch okay now if they do not respond to our vague pitch the next day we send them a follow-up if they still don't respond another one another one another one, right we send all these seven follow-ups because they've already opted in to hearing more information so we're going to make sure that they hear it and that they respond to us with either a yes or a no whether they're open to hearing more information right and a lot of the times we'll ask a question here, uh, but that's fine. We deal with that question on this call, right? So once they respond anything to here, to any of these follow-ups, to any of this pitch, right? Then either they're going to be like, leave me alone, or they'll be like asking a question or they'll be like, sure. And then you call them, right? With a number that you're going to get from the software that we swipe the leads from, which I'll show you um, later as well. So if you dial them, and they do not answer their phone, you're going to send them another follow-up and then another one and another one, right? You're going to keep sending them follow-ups, right? Until they actually pick up their phone, okay? Because so we need to get on a call with them, okay? And then once you have done all of that, right, then the appointment is going to be set or they're just not going to book, right? Um, but obviously a percentage of these people we are going to book, right? And it should be around at least two to three percent, probably more, right? I know people who have done this who have achieved five percent um, or higher, right? But at least two to three percent on this. Um, if you can't get that, then you're probably doing something wrong, okay? Um, but this is an extremely powerful way of actually getting to these people um, and actually getting them to book the calls. That's basically the entire process on how everything in the dm system works i'm going to give you the right like the lead gen and the tracking stuff um very shortly um but that is the the broad overview of how the system works it works extremely extremely well right with instagram and facebook you can send up to 50 messages every single day per account obviously if you want more you can buy more um or make more um but essentially that is those are the limits um, for each account. And if you're sending 100 a day and you are converting at 5%, you're going to make easily five appointments happen in like two hours, which is obviously a huge return on your investment. Um, and uh, and yeah, that's that's pretty much it. So uh, if you have any questions, obviously, um, let me know. And I'll see you in the setting up social profiles video where we're going to go over some specific things in terms of your instagram profile and your facebook profile um, in order to actually make this process work because you do need to have somewhat of a profile so i'll see you so this one is going to be quite a bit shorter um it's pretty simple um you're setting up your social profiles so obviously you're able to outreach to people using them and so that you can achieve maximum results right so um and this is not in here Okay, so this is how you need to set up your social media. Um, 
in order to see results. Okay, so here's just a few things, right? You're going to hide or remove or archive any pictures of you doing like stupid shit, right? Because if someone sees, right, whatever you're doing on your social media, right? I just have to say this: um, if you're doing some, have some dumb shit on your Instagram, just hide it. Okay, um, you don't need business owners seeing that because then they probably won't very much trust in you. Okay, so. You want to add SDR for whatever company you're assigned to, or right, whatever your company is, um, right, or as well as whatever else you'd like. So you could put like SDR for JKD agency, and then like a hobby, right? Like I like fishing. I don't know, right? It is not like a strict rule on like what you need to add. Um, just general guidelines. Okay. You want to have three to nine posts to yourself. Okay. Um, and the reason for that is because when you pull up someone's Instagram page, the first thing they see is those three to nine photos, right? So if you don't have any, if you have like two, it's going to feel like something's missing, right? It's like, that's kind of strange. Um, but you need to, to make sure that you actually look like a normal profile, right? Because there are a lot of fake profiles out there. So the goal, right? It's supposed to make you look like you're a normal human being and you're not trying to sell anything to anyone, okay? This is going to massively increase your response rate. You do not want to like have like, all of this like business and these graphic posts like on your profile, right? You want to look like a normal human being. So people actually want to interact with you and they're not going to be like, okay, this is just another sales pitch, right? Um, and it, it all goes back to that thing about being different and about standing out, right? You do not want to be like everyone else because most people don't like everyone else, okay? So you need to be a little bit different. So. If you are completely against using personal profiles, you can contact me and I'll set you up with a fake profile. However, you're going to be at a huge disadvantage because you're gonna have no posts, no followers, um, and it's gonna take you quite a while to actually ramp up to those 15 messages a day, which is obviously gonna, uh, it's gonna uh, result in less appointments and less money. So I would recommend just using your personal profile, okay? So this is a good example of a Facebook profile, right? And you need to make sure that your background is something like a quote or like a, a skyline, right? You don't want to have like, I can just pull up on Facebook one sec here. Okay, the absolute last thing that you want to have on your profile is something like this, like calendarappointments.com, like with this stupid pitch in his bio, okay? I do not care. I know this is guy is trying to pitch me something, right? He, he Maybe he even is a real profile, but I don't want to like accept this guy because i know he's just gonna pitch me so don't do that it's not a smart idea okay um i don't know why my camera disappeared for a second there but do not make a sales background okay do not make a graphic background it should just be like a quote or a landscape or like a picture of you and your family or something right now make sure your profile picture is also casual right you don't want to be like in a suit or anything like that because you, you once again you like you look like a salesperson this is not linkedin right and linkedin it is appropriate to do that and linkedin you should do that um, but this isn't LinkedIn, right? You just want to appear like a normal human being. Okay. So here are some bio examples, right? So from, this is my bio, right? Founder at JKD agency, right? And this is my pitch, right? I'm also not reaching onto this account, right? But you, what you'd want to have is like founder at JKD agency, varsity athlete at Western, right? It's whatever, like something about yourself, right? To make you seem like a human. Um, and then make sure you also have all these things filled out, like your job, where you live, where you're from, like, and it just, it just makes you look like more of a real person, right? Which is the goal here. Um, make sure you have some photos, right? Very important. Um, post like maybe once every two weeks, this isn't like a hard rule or anything, but it is important that you have some posts on your account. Um, Cause if you're sending like from a blank profile with no profile picture, right? You just look fake, okay? So, it can you can literally post about anything. It can be doesn't have to be related to work. It probably shouldn't be related to work. Um, because once again, you just don't look like a human when you do that. That's so here is an example, right? This is my Instagram profile with the three photos, right? You can see it's filled out, right? If I were to have only two photos and you see a blank space, it's kind of weird, right? Um, so yeah, you should have at least three pictures. Make sure you fill the page and look real. Do not post stock photos, right? I already mentioned that. Having more followers is actually also going to increase your credibility. If you want to buy them, which I would not recommend you do, but you can do them, it will increase your conversion rate. Um, however, you have a small chance of getting your account banned, which is probably not a good idea. Um, but 
Another thing that you can do that can also massively increase your conversion rate, which I would recommend, is actually getting verified. I think it's $10 um, per month. I haven't done this yet. I'm probably going to very shortly. Um, but it is going to actually increase your profile rate because you're going to have that level of authority that people see. It's like, oh, okay, this guy was like actually worth responding to, right? Um, so that's going to help. So that's pretty much it, right? Like I said, pretty short, um, pretty short video. I kind of just want to explain um, a few things, a few things on like your checklist of what you need to actually have set up in order to have a profile that converts. Okay, so I'll see you in the the next video here. Alrighty, so I am going to show you how to actually set up close. Now, what is close? Close is the CRM and the power dialing tool that we use obviously to call a bunch of phone numbers keep organized um and just basically get as much output for the for what we for the time that we're putting in right in terms of our cold calling okay so you're gonna go to close.com here and then you're going to sign up for the 14 day trial okay um you're going to share um your email password with me on slack right i'm going to need this in order to integrate our clients calendly with close or my calendly with close right um so that we can actually right just book the appointments straight into close and then it's going to translate over to the calendly okay and there's an integration with that right so you want to once you actually have that signed up for you're going to want to download it onto windows or mac or whatever um os you're using right um now we actually need to to go to close here okay. so i'm gonna open this up here right and what we want to do i'm gonna make this smaller so i can actually see the the thing okay um go we're good okay. so we want to go to custom fields is the first thing that we want to do it's in settings okay and we're going to go um sorry we're going to go to business name and time zone we're going to add business name and time zone as custom fields okay so custom fields is right here okay so we need to add new lead custom field and we're going to call this time zone right okay just call this time zone and then we want to add field now i already have one right but this what this basically does is when we actually book um or sorry when we actually add leads into close it's odd the the time zone is automatically going to get put in here so we can categorize these people by the time zone that they're in so that we can easily like filter out the different time zones and obviously call people during that golden hour right okay and then you're also going to add business name it's not a regular field in here for some reason um but we have the name of the business it's somewhat important to know that right um and it's going to help us distinguish who we are exactly calling okay so after that, you're going to go to statuses and pipelines and make sure you have these three opportunities, right? So statuses and pipelines is right over here. Okay, and you're gonna make sure that you have these opportunities. Okay, so you're gonna have rejected, if, which is gonna be obviously most people. Um, so if you call them and they say, leave me alone, then you're just going to add this um, to them, right? And you can, you'll see this opportunity when you're actually calling them. Okay, and then follow up later. So if they say, yeah, I'm interested, but now it's not a good time. Okay, so then you add follow up later, and then you just leave a note on the on the actual prospect that you're calling, which is pretty simple to do, right? When you're in the actual calling part, um, when you're power dialing, it's gonna pull up the contacts information, um, and you're just gonna be able to type in a note in there, okay? And as well as add these opportunities. And then you wanna add booked, right? Booked a call, and then showed, okay? So, this is basically how you're gonna manage all these different people, right? So along with the tracking as well that I'm gonna show you, all, uh, I'm gonna show you how to do as well. This is gonna be your main thing without actually track all the leads, um, but this is gonna be important too, just to stay organized, right? So you can call this whatever you want, right? We'll just do rejected, for example, right? This is going to be a lost opportunity, right? And then you just add this, right? Or if you're doing booked, right? This is not a one opportunity yet. It's only one when they actually show up to the call. Um, more when they close, I guess. But in this case, when we're, how we're tracking it is when they show up to the call. Is there one um, prospect, right? And we're, this would just be an active point because they haven't showed up. Okay, so that's how you would do that. So once you're done that, you want to go to the phone and voicemail and add a number. Okay, so for the best results, you can add a number for each state that you're going to be calling. Okay, this is going to increase your pickup rate. However, it's not required. However, it is going to improve your conversions and it costs about a dollar a month per number, right? So it's not very much, okay? So how you do this is phone and voicemail settings, right? So that is gonna be over here. Okay, so then you just add a number, right? You're gonna get 
your one for free. Um, you just add a number, um, probably a US number, and then you can just add the prefix number, right? So wherever you're calling from, I don't have a voice, uh, or I don't have a prefix off the top of my head, but let's see if you wanted to call people in like Miami, right? Miami phone number code, area code. So 305, right? So what you do if you want to get a Miami number, um, then you'd simply just go do 305, right? And you just request a new number. Oh, they don't have any in stock. Um, but you can, like most of them will have them in stock. And also there's multiple numbers, right? But for the most part, you're going to be able to find the ones that actually work. I think this one is also from Florida, right? Um, so yeah, make sure you actually get an area code um, that is from the state that you're calling. It's going to improve your conversion rates, okay? So when you need to import leads, okay? Now we go to settings here. You're going to go to leads, which is here, okay? And you're gonna click this plus. Now you don't wanna add them individually because you're gonna take five years to do that, okay? You're gonna import as a CSV, okay? And then you're going to go to the spreadsheet of the leads that you should have downloaded with the cold calling leads that I'll give you, right? If you run low on leads, which I'm gonna, I'm gonna explain all this here, if you have less than 300 phone numbers in any time zone, let me know on Slack, I will get you a new list, and then you, then I send you the list, you download it, right? And then obviously you use um, you use that list, right? You upload this to CSV, and I'll just give you an example. I'm not actually gonna upload this, but just you need to know how to do this, assign fields, right? So this is literally nothing, right? Um, I don't know why this is showing up here, but I'll give you a, a list. This is just a random list that I have, um, and it's not going to have all this garbage. You can just click skip here. Name, right? This is not the full name of the person. This is definitely the business name, okay? So you want to go look for the custom field that you made from business, right? Now, this is the phone, right? It knows that this is the phone. This is the email. This is the email. This is the first name. This is the first name. It's good. This is the last name, last name, job title, this is skip this don't need that um right i'm only going to give you business owners personal email right you can just have this as you can make a custom field for personal email as well um but i think this is the same one as the other one so you probably don't want to have that um but we can yeah so you probably want to make a custom field for personal email right and this is useless this is useless this is useless this is useless right so you can categorize them by all these things right and then you just go next and then remove the duplicates and add them. Okay, so that's how you do it. Now, once you have those uploaded, uploaded, you want to go to leads and add a filter. You'll then want to sort by contact and time zone. So this is going to open a quick view of one particular time zone, right? You'll want to do this for all the time zones, so EST, MST, CST, and PST, right? Um, and you can switch between time zones when the hour changes, right? So then you can switch the times that you're calling right so how do you actually do this well as you can see in here right um i actually don't have to set up properly but essentially what you want to do here is you want to go to add filter so you want to go to leads right and then you just search a time zone then you click here um contains yeah is exactly right you can just do est and then it's going to pull up all the leads whose time zone is est right and then you click done okay and now what you want to do is you're going to click save as, right? You're going to open a smart view. So you call this EST, you call this EST feeds, right? Um, you can share it. It doesn't really matter because there's only going to be one account. Then you save it, right? And now you have a smart view. So you click on here. You only see EST leads. Ooh, that's pretty cool, right? Okay, so now once you actually have the smart view list, you go here again to filters and you can add another filter, right? Because we only, if we're going to be calling these people, we need to make sure that we haven't also already called them again or before, right? So what you're going to do is you're going to go to calls here and you're going to do find leads where total number of calls, right? Is less, is exactly, and then you want to do zero, right? So all these people we have not called yet, okay? And then you're going to click done. So now they're all Eastern time zone people who have not been called before. Okay, and you want to do these for all the time zones, people that you haven't called that are that time zone. Okay, these are the two qualifications that they need to have, right? Um, 
and then you're going to be able to call them, right? So how do you actually go ahead and call them? Well, pretty simply, you just want to go here, click this, and you want to click start calling, right? So it's just going to automatically start calling these leads, right? And now it's actually calling them. So I want to cancel. Actually, it's preparing to call them. Um, but this is just going to be power dialing, right? Now we're going to actually end this call. How, did I do it? Okay, I think it's still calling this person. Um, I don't know what's happening. Okay, so I'm going to get out of there. Um, but essentially, what you what you actually do here, right, is you when you when you do that, it's just going to automatically ring the person, and when they pick up, obviously they're just going to be like hello, and then you and you go ahead and talk to them, right? So it's going you don't even have to touch the keyboard. You can have your hands on your head, and it's going to be calling. So that's going to be really powerful, really efficient, really effective, right? So now to actually right, um, we need to to do a few settings before we actually start dialing, right? So. What you have to do in your smart view, like I said, you want to click the icon on the top and start power dialing. So we need to make sure before we do that, that it's actually on, it's actually set up to hang up after 20 seconds. I also think it's going to call for like 30 seconds. Okay. So if you actually go to the, the, the icon here that I was talking about and you go to manage, right? And if you go to options here, right, you can turn on reduced ring time. So this is going to obviously lower the amount of rings before moving on to the next lead this is going to it's going to allow you to call more people in a shorter time frame and then obviously if there are some people like this is going to lower your pickup rate slightly like very very slightly but it's going to allow you to call way more people um which is ultimately going to allow you to book more meetings um and if they see that you called there's a good chance that they'll call you back too right and then you can pick them up um so you want to make sure that this is on and then once that's on you're already ready to start dialing okay um and it's as simple as that so that's all you need to set up close. Um, it's pretty simple, right? Just need to do those things, import the list of leads, set up the settings, and then you can start calling. Um, so you're going to be compensated, obviously, the 50, I think it's $60 a month, actually. Um, once the 14-day trial is over, right? Um, however, if you want the predictive dollar, um, which I'm not going to go over too much, basically, it allows you to call up to 10 people at once, um, and then it connects you with the first person that picks up. If you want to invest in that, it is definitely going to give you an ROI. Um, so you can go ahead and do that. Um, that is completely up to you. Um, it's also going to allow you to do automatic voicemail drops. So you can send voicemails to people automatically if they do not pick up. Okay. So that's basically all you need to know about Close. It's a very powerful tool. It's very easy to use and set up. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much it. Uh, if you have any questions on how to actually set that up, um, obviously let me know in the Slack channel and then I will make sure that I can help you out with that. Okay. So I'll see you in the next video, how to generate leads, right? I'm actually going to end up doing this for you, um, but it is very important that you know it. And then, um, once we cover that, then, um, just moving on to, um, how we actually track our metrics, cause that's going to be key, um, in terms of our success. Okay. So with that out of the way, um, I'll see you in the next video. Okay, so this is how we actually generate the leads that we're going to be reaching out to on Instagram DMs, Facebook DMs, and cold calling. Okay, so basically, you're not going to be doing this. However, I think it is important that you actually kind of understand how it works. Um, just so you're not in the dark on anything. I'm going to be doing this for you, right? Um, if you ever have less than 300 phone numbers in any of these time zones, or if you have less than 300 facebook slash instagram leads you need to message me on slack and i will get you more leads okay um because if you ever have less than these right we need more of them okay we don't want to fall to the point where we're like at one lead left okay we never want that to happen so if you have less than 300 message me and i will get that fixed for you okay so you want to be sitting at about 100 per like time zone ideally okay so before we go ahead and scrape, now this is this this is this is what you need to do. All this going on is stuff that you're not gonna be doing except for the very last part. Okay. So before you scrape, right, we need to go to our company document um, that I'm going to give to you. And basically it's a it's a Google Doc. It just has all the locations that we have already scraped. Um, and we need to make sure that basically we're scraping from a place that we have not already done before right that is going to be pretty important um so once we have identified a location that has not already been scraped we're going to enter that location in the document and then we're going to scrape that location on lead swift and this is going to be a city 
ideally a larger city okay so i'm just going to log in here really quick okay um and i'm going to show you how we actually go ahead and use this okay so we need to first add a campaign right so not in loom we're going to go to add a campaign we can call this car, we're going to look for car repair companies um because i have a client in the car repair industry um in chicago because it's a large um, city and it's in the CST time zone, I think, right? I think it's in the CST time zone um, and we don't have uh, enough leads from there at the moment, okay? So just to check, um, we wanna make sure Chicago time zone, yeah, CST. So it's good, right? Description, car repair in Chicago, pretty simple, right? Then we wanna go ahead and submit that. So now we need to go to our car repair companies in Chicago and we need to look for car repair and maintenance okay and then location right we just do chicago chicago illinois right there you go so what we want to do here now is search okay now what it's going to do is this is going to search for the leads on yellow pages on google maps on facebook on basically everywhere where you can think of which is why i like this software um because you can basically it, like it scrapes the entire internet for what we're looking for um and it is going to just going to find those for us the only downside is it takes some time right so it takes about like 30 minutes to an hour to actually come up with these results so i'm actually going to go to the gym and then <laughs> film the rest of this video once i get back um and once these results uh once these results are Alrighty, so the leads have finished going through. I exported the list, okay? Um, I'm actually going to be using a different list here just because it's faster for us, okay? Um, but essentially what you wanna do here is make sure that you're merging um, the leads by domain. That's gonna be an option in the campaign once they've actually, the leads have been generated and then you're just gonna export them, okay? So once the list is exported, right? We need to import them into a Google Sheets, okay? You can use Excel if you want, um, but I think Excel is stupid. So we're just gonna use Google Sheets, okay? So I'm going to go ahead and input this, and we are going to append this to the current sheet. Okay, we don't want to change the sheet. That's fine. It doesn't really matter. Okay. So now we're going to have all this information. Okay. Now, a lot of this information is not relevant. Okay. So we don't need this at all. We can get rid of it. We don't need this either. Okay. Um, and now we have the information that we are looking for. Okay. So we have the phone numbers. We have the emails. We have the company names. All right. And that is the info that we need, as well as the URLs here. Okay, we don't need this either. So we're going to remove that as well. Okay, so what we want to do here is we want to clean this list. Okay, so right now there is a quite a few companies in here that are not fit for what we are actually looking for, um, and a lot of them are probably not very good contact uh, information. Okay, so we need to make sure that this is the best list as possible because that is what is going to increase our chance of actually booking the appointment and closing that sale. Okay. So what we're going to do is we are going to remove chains of three or more companies. Okay. So we can actually change this realistically to two or more companies. Actually, well, yeah, we can change this to two or more companies. It's probably at that point, like it's probably they already have something in house. Maybe we can do three plus, right? But I'll show you how to do this regardless. So what you want to do here is to actually make sure um, that we are not reaching out to like multiple like companies with a bunch of branches right we don't want that so what we do is do conditional formatting and we want this to be red because we're going to end up deleting these um and we want to we want to add a custom value or a custom formula and that's going to be equals count if um and then the column right you can uh, look at this and kind of remember um how this is and then greater than two so this is for all the companies that have more than two if you want to do have more than one then you just do like that right for our purposes we're going to do more than two um and that is let's call it there we go okay so that is essentially how you would go ahead and do that right so i'm not sure if there's actually that many there are a few um but right not that many okay so what we need to do here is go ahead and sort by those companies okay so we're just going to grab all of these and we're going to filter this so i need to pull this up here we're going to create a filter and then we're going to sort these by the color by the fill color okay so these are obviously like we're not going to rent we're not going to reach out to jiffy lube um obviously they don't need our help okay i think they're doing fine on their own so we're going to go ahead and delete all these um because they are probably 
not going to be um, someone that we are going to be able to help. Right now, we also want to make sure that the people we are reaching out to are, I guess, yeah, we don't want to we don't want to reach out to people that aren't in the niche that we're looking for. Right. So in this case, we're looking for car repair shops um, and auto repair shops, body shops, stuff like that. OK, so how we can make sure that these are accurate um, is by the category here. OK, so it gives you a category of what the, sh the shop actually is. Most of them are going to be correct. However, some of them are not going to be. So we want to make sure text contains um, what we're looking for here. So like repair, if text contains repair, then it's a good fit. OK, if the text contains auto shop, then it's a fit. But like something like tire shop or car inspection, that is not what we are looking for, right? If it says body shop, that is what we're looking for. But we don't want to see like car inspection. We don't want to see auto parts. Okay, none of that stuff is what we actually help with. Okay, so we need to make sure that we're actually reaching out to the right people. Okay, so what we do here is we click this again, right? And we want to sort um, by white. And now we can see all of these, um, these ones that are not uh like towing like rent car rentals like none of that stuff is what we're actually looking for and there are quite a few also this list is extremely big so it kind of makes sense um but yeah not all of these are going to be a fit um it looks like quite a few of them are like used cars new cars um car rental yeah like all this stuff is um it's not actually real so not quite half of them about a third of them are not a fit so then we just go ahead and get rid of all of these okay so now we have about how many? We have about 2K in Philadelphia, which is not bad, right? Um, so we want to clear this out even further, okay? So now what we're going to do is we're going to make sure the phones, and in this case, actually, these phones don't need to be reformatted, but in some cases, depending on where you're actually pulling the leads from, it's going to have like some with like a plus one in front and some with like the brackets on the, the area code, and it's all going to be a mess. So what you do in that case is you just press Control F, um, and then you just look for plus one, right? And then you would go here and then you replace with nothing and then you replace all. Um, in this case, we don't have that problem because Lead Swift formats these nicely for us already. Um, but in some cases, you would need to do that, okay? So what we need to do here um, essentially is, uh, I think, yeah. So essentially what we need to do is we need to make sure that none of these Facebook and Instagram URLs are the same either. Okay, so we would use the formula um, that I'll show you in a sec, right? Um, we would make sure that custom formula is right equals um, what row is this? This is D, D1, and then this is greater than one, right? We want to get catch anything that is greater than one. Um, so and then we delete those rows because obviously that's the the same the same business. So there are a few of them, right? And we just get rid of those. That's completely fine. So like that one, we get rid of that one, we get rid of this one. And right, it's going to be a lot easier if we actually go about sorting this, um, sort by color like that, right? And then we can just go ahead and delete all these duplicates. Now, we actually don't want to do that, okay? And there's for a very reason. The reason for that is, for example, if we get rid of one of these, like now this one opens up and this is fine. So we don't want to delete two of the same thing. Um, because then we get rid of both of them and we don't want that, if that makes sense. So what we can do here, right, is we can just get rid of these individually because some of them are going to disappear. Like, see, that one just popped up because it's not a duplicate anymore. So it's a little bit tedious, but it's not taking too long. And I think that is about it. There we go. See, all done. Now what we can do is we can sort this again we can sort a to z right so now we can see and that there are some that don't even have a that's actually not what we wanted to do um because some of them don't have facebook urls anyways um but if we go back here right okay there we go so these ones here um we can see that this one was a duplicate what we probably should have done was just deleted them uh straight off the bat um but it's okay. Um, it'll just take us a little bit longer to do here. So I'll just pause this for. A okay. So we need to go ahead and do the exact same thing um, for the Instagram profiles, right? And I'm not. I'm just going to do that real quick. I'm not going to bore you with it. But we need to make sure that there's no duplicates there either. 
Okay. So now we have a qualified and quality list of Facebook and Instagram URLs, right? So we need to kind of verify the phones first. Um, we need to make sure that those are mobile numbers, but all these Facebook URLs and all these Instagram URLs are completely good to go. So what we're going to do is we're going to sort these by the Facebook URL and by the Instagram URL, and then we're going to move those into a separate list of only like only leads with Facebook URLs in them so that we can reach out to those Facebook group, Facebook uh, profiles separately from everything else. And then we can keep everything organized. Once we have those exported, then we're going to go um, and check out the mobile numbers or sorry, check out these phone numbers and make sure that they actually are mobile numbers. So what I'm doing here is I'm simply just copying these three columns, right? And then I'm going to the car repair Philadelphia Instagram leads folder that I just created. And we're going to go ahead and paste all of those in here. Okay, so now what we want to do, right, is we want to um, do a conditional formatting here, uh, and we want to do is not empty is green, right, and then we just go like this, we pull out our little filtering tool, and then what we want to do is click here, sort by the color, um, and we make sure that all these blank ones are gone, which is going to be most of them, and that is pretty normal, especially when we're reaching out to car repair shops, um, but that's just how it is, okay, um, so we get rid of the ones that do not have that, that link, and we're going to do the exact same thing. We're going to do the exact same thing for Facebook groups. Um, this is lagging a little bit, unfortunately, uh, but we're going to do the exact same thing for Facebook groups. Um, and then I'm going to snap to basically when we actually qualify um, the, the numbers and make sure that they're actually mobile numbers. Alrighty, so now we want to import our list to clear our phone. So essentially, I mean, obviously this costs money, right? So when I kind of look at this, it's like, what percentage increase am I going to get for my pickup rate? And how much is that going to, in in turn, affect my, return, affect my return on investment, okay? And you can do the math yourself, but in my case, it makes the most sense, obviously, to be able to provide my team, obviously, with the best quality phone numbers so that they can make the most money, so that I can make the most money, so that my clients can make the most money, so that everyone can make the most money and everyone's happy, right? So... How you actually do this is what you want to do is go to quick validation. Um, no, I'm just kidding. You don't want to do that. You want to go to my lists. And what you want to do is add a list, right? And then you want to essentially grab your um, your information here, right, of all your leads. And you're going to go ahead and you're going to go ahead and download this, right, as a, um, as a CSV. Okay, once this is actually downloaded, now we can go ahead and add this to clear our phone, right? So this is what we just downloaded. Okay, and it's, I believe it, there's about 2,000 uh, 2, leads in there. So this is going to actually validate all of these people in here. Okay, so we're going to go ahead, yeah, 1928, we're going to validate all of these. Um, and the country that we're looking for is the United United States, right? Now we're going to go ahead and validate these. Now this takes a little bit of time. It's not too long. Um, I think it takes about two minutes. I might be wrong on that, um, but it's not too bad. Okay, yeah, even even faster than that. So it's already done, right? So now what we do is it's actually not done. Um, now it's done. Okay. So you notice that there's apparently 16 duplicates in there, which is a good thing that it found those, right? So what we want to do is go ahead and actually download these results, and then we can filter them by the mobile numbers. So what you want to do is do custom, right? So it's going to keep the URLs and keep everything like that. So you can just straight up replace the other sheet um, with this new sheet that you're going to be downloading, obviously. So what you want to do is have only valid phone numbers, right? Um, that's pretty obvious. All of these phone numbers are valid. Um, we're getting them from a good lead source. So we're not going to have many fake phone numbers. Um, there might be a few, but in this case, there isn't any, which is really good. Um, it's just those duplicates, right? But our main thing is to make sure that we're actually getting the mobile numbers. Um, we know that most of these leads are going to be valid anyways. So I'm going to skip to where we actually have this downloaded. Um, oh, well, that was quick, right? So we can just go in here, right? And we can go ahead to file and import and upload. And we're going to get this, right? And what we're going to do is replace the current spreadsheet, right? And then it's going to remove all this and import the exact same thing, but with all of this clear out phone data, okay? So basically, there's a lot more information here now, okay? So there's a lot of useless information as well, so we can remove those. So for example, we don't need to know if it's valid because we already know they're already valid, okay? Um, and now there's all these different um, formats this really does not make a difference to us. We can get rid of that, okay? And we don't need them to say, I don't even know what this is. 
can be internationally dialed, I would assume that all of these can be, and that is a correct assumption, okay? Um, this time taken is completely useless. Um, yeah, we do not care about this whatsoever, um, right? We don't care about when it was validated. It's completely irrelevant to us. Um, we already, sorry, we already know the country. It's in the U.S., right? We don't need to have that here. Um, I don't know what this is. Yeah, we don't need to know this either. Like, there's a lot of information that is not helpful, right? Um, not helpful. Um, not helpful. Um, not helpful. We already know it's in Philadelphia, right? Um, so not helpful. Um, we can see the carrier here. Uh, we don't really need to know that either. The real thing is this, right? The fixed line or, or the VoIP or the mobile number. And it looks like, unfortunately, most of these are fixed lines, which is really pretty sad. Okay. Um, but it's better to know that. And now we don't have to call these fixed lines, right? especially the toll-free ones. We do not want to be calling the toll-free ones. Okay? So what we can do here, right? Um, first of all, we want to add a row, right? We want to name this time zone because um, that is going to be important when we're actually exporting these into close, which I already did show you how to do, um, right? And we're just going to have this set as ESD because Philadelphia is in Eastern time. Um, and we're just going to go ahead and make all of these um, set to Eastern time because they are all Eastern time. Now, what we want to do is, first of all, we want to get rid of the VoIPs and we want to get rid of the um, toll-free numbers, okay? So those are the most important ones that we want to get rid of. So how we can do that is we can simply just go to conditional formatting and we can do if cell contains, right? Um, we can just do keep the good ones, the mobile, if it contains uh, mobile, then it's green, or if it contains a uh, fixed line, then it can be green as well. And then we can just filter these out all by the non-green ones. And those are going to be the ones that we instantly want to get rid of because those aren't even going to ring. Um, and that's obviously like, there's no point even calling them. Um, so that's just going to be a simple waste of time. Like these VoIPs and these toll-free numbers are going to be absolutely not good to call, right? So we, there's not too many of them. We can just uh, remove them, right? So now we kind of want to differentiate between the fixed line and the mobile numbers, we don't want to do it like that. Um, we would rather do it like this, right? So as we can see here, a large percentage of them, like 90% of them, are actually fixed lines, unfortunately. Um, so in these cases, it might be beneficial to still reach out to these fixed lines. Um, and in the case where it's a smaller business, the owner will still possibly pick up. Um, but it's kind of a, it kind of depends on the industry that you are working with, right? So if there is a lot of mobile numbers like if you're calling real estate it's going to be definitely better to just call the mobile numbers however in an industry like this it's probably makes more sense that you want to reach out to the fixed lines um just because you're cutting out a lot of businesses you're going to go through these very fast and it is going to be quite expensive um to actually be able to just get the mobile numbers um because if we look at this like if we actually sort by the mobile numbers right like we have some um but we only have 130, um, which really is not good. So in this specific example, um, I will have these set up to be calling the fixed lines. However, if you are in a position where it's like 50-50, just remove all the fixed lines because this is it's going to be so much more valuable to be able to only call mobile numbers. Um, however, right, depending on your industry, this may be very useful. Um, where you want to be able to reach out to only the mobile numbers. But in this case, it's not really a possibility as we would be cutting out way too many, um, way too many businesses that could be potential buyers for the business, right? Um, and I can guarantee you, most of these are not going to be large chains. Most of them are going to be small businesses, which is exactly what we are looking for, okay? So that is basically the whole rundown of how you actually export leads, right? When you want to move the leads from the Instagram and the Facebook spreadsheet into your tracker right every single day at the beginning of your day you're going to basically copy all of the all of the instagram urls and the names and the phone numbers you're going to insert them into your direct message tracker 
right? And then you're going to turn the rows red so that you know you use them so you don't copy them again tomorrow, okay? And I will give you some more information on what that actually means um, on our one-on-one -on -one if you don't understand it or on our onboarding, okay? Um, but I hope everything makes sense, um, and I'll see you in the next video, which is going to kind of explain more about the DM tracking side of things and hopefully clear up some... Uh, some whatever you're missing right on, on how you'd actually go about tracking all of this information because that's going to be something that is extremely important okay so i hope this was valuable and i'll see you in the next one okay so i'm going to walk you through how the tracking system works now preface um basically the most important thing that you can possibly do other than actually doing it obviously is tracking it okay we are never, ever, 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 ever going to be able to make any smart decisions or going to be able to improve on anything that we're doing if we do not have data, okay? Because we're going to make shit decisions, um, and obviously that is not good for anyone, okay? So we need to make sure we are diligent and accurate with everything that we track, okay? If you're lying about your pitch rate or you forget to put in the call, like, the metrics are going to be skewed. We cannot actually make accurate decisions right we might think some part of the process is wrong when it's actually another part right and it's just a whole mess okay so we need to make sure we are tracking our metrics okay so i did not write anything here because it's going to take too long okay so i'd rather just explain it on this video okay so we need to make sure that the metrics that we're tracking is actually accurate now i'm not going to go over this right now um this is in the the actual onboarding sheet Okay, so we're not going to go over that. Now we have two different tracking sheets here, right? We have the CC, which is cold calling, and then the DM, which is direct messaging. Okay. Um, now I'm going to walk you through the cold calling one first because it's easier, right? So first of all, make sure that you're actually putting the data in the right month. Okay. I don't want to see everyone putting stuff in January when it's December. Okay. Um, it might be January though. It's almost January when I'm recording this, so it probably will be January. Okay. Um, but make sure you are putting the stuff in the correct month. Now, I don't know why this task bar decided to appear there. Okay, that's good. So I'm going to go over the cold calling because it's pretty simple. Okay, you're going to have this open while you have close open. Okay. And this is, you're just going to split tab this, right? You're going to have, you're going to put it up here. One, your tracking sheet is here, closes on the right, right? Whatever. You, or if you have two monitors, even better. Okay. But today is the 29th of December, right? So if we were to do this today, Right. Um, let's say this is the 29th of the month because I cannot see the bottom part. Okay. So we'll just go over here now. December, cold calling 29th. So every single time we ring, right, we are going to put a one here. Okay. If we ring again, we're going to go two, right, three for every single dial that we make. Okay. Every single time that someone picks up the phone, we're going to add one. Okay. If another person picks, okay, let's say we make another call. Um, they, we call them, they pick up. But it's not the decision maker. So then we just stop. Okay, we call again, right? We pick up. Um, this time it is the decision maker. And he, act we, he actually lets us pitch him too, but he doesn't book the appointment. Okay, so now we, we call again, right? And they don't even pick up. We call again, they don't pick up. They call, we call again, they don't pick up. We call again, they pick up. We reach the decision maker, right? We pitch the decision maker and we book the appointment, okay? And then we come back here in two days for whenever he booked the appointment. Right, and then we add a show. But I'm going to show you how to do that differently. Okay, but this part is very, 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 very simple to do. Okay, now a way that you can maximize the efficiency of this is actually just to do it like update it every hour. So what you can do is you can pull out a piece of paper. Okay, and then you can write all these different columns on like dials made, pickups made, decision makers reached, decision makers pitched, and appointments booked. Right, like you can make like columns on a piece of paper and then just put tick marks. For every single every single time you call someone, for every single time they pick up, right, and then at the end of every hour, you can add it to your your sheet. Say, okay, so this hour I made seventy eight calls, right? Um, like whatever, like fourteen people picked up. I hope more than that picks up, but let's say fourteen people picked up, all right, and we reached like eleven decision makers. Um, we ended up pitching five of them, and then two of them booked, right? So something like that um would be uh, uh would be what you do and then you'd update this for every time so okay um it's pretty self-explanatory so now one thing to know when you actually book a call you need to update this okay this is going to be very important to keep track of who's actually 
your, here your leads are, who you've actually booked, okay? So the decision maker name, right? You're gonna need this obviously to book them into the call, right? It's just gonna be a simple web form when you book someone in, right? You're gonna have a calendar. Um, I'll just pull up my my calendar um, just to show you guys what it actually kind of looks like. Um, let me just go over to my LinkedIn profile. I know my calendar is on here, um, right here, right? Um, so this is what the calendar is going to look like, right? You're going to talk to the decision maker on the phone. I'm just showing you this right now because right now let's say, okay, I'm available on January 2nd at 10 a.m. Um, EST. Okay, well, you want to make sure that you're in the right time zone. So you go to EST, right? Um, 10 a.m. Are we available at 10 a.m. Eastern time? Oh, we're not available at 10 a.m. Eastern time. Okay. Um, hmm. Let's see. Does, does 11 a.m. work for you? They'll be like, oh, yeah, 11 a.m. works for me. Okay, perfect. We'll book you in then, right? Um, your first name. What's your last name, sir? Don't call them sir, by the way. <laughs> and then you put their email in, or they give you it, and they say, hey, is this a good, good phone number to, to reach you on? They said, sure. All right, you check the box, um, and then you put some information about the person, right? And then you schedule the meeting. Um, obviously, it's not going to let me because I didn't fill this out, but that's essentially what you do. Okay, it's pretty simple. Um, so you put the decision maker's name in here, their full name, right? And then the date when they booked, so today's date right when they scheduled for so in this case that i just showed you january 2nd and then their status right so every time you add something to this list it's going to be scheduled um and then i'm just going to verify this for payout so you don't touch that okay um and then say on the second they you hear from the client or from me that they showed up then you just click showed here right um and then obviously now we have your commission here whatever um we decide it will be um we'll negotiate that um upon signing right um and, and then um, if they if they did not show up, then you put following up on Ghost. That means you call them every single day until they pick up the, until they answer, right? And you're going to be able to obviously like look up the decision maker's name or on uh, on close, right? Or like you just put the you can just put the phone number here um, as well. That's probably a better idea. Actually, I'm going to adjust this and make a, a column for the phone number. Um, and phone number. Yeah, so you're gonna have their phone number, right? If you learn that they did not show up, then you're gonna call them every single day until they pick up the phone and you're gonna say, hey, um, are you able to, like, are, uh, I'm gonna give you a script for following up on these people, but it's gonna be something like, hey, um, is everything okay? I saw you didn't make the meeting um, on this date, right? You want to say like everything is okay because it shows that you have some genuine concern for them and they're going to feel bad and then they'll book a call, right? So if they, if you tell them that and they're like, yeah, fuck off, then they're a dead lead, right? Or it's like, I'm not interested in anyone and they're a dead lead. Um, and then obviously if they showed, then you just click showed, right? It's pretty self-explanatory. And then I go ahead and verify the, the amount of shows um, and then you get paid, right? Uh, pretty good. So the DM system is slightly more complicated. So I'm going to show you how this works, right? So there's a lot here, right? I'm going to move this up here so that you can actually see some stuff. And I'm going to zoom out as well because we cannot see even half the stuff in here. So this is what it looks like, right? This is probably like like what's going on, right? So I'm going to show you exactly what in the world is going on here. So remember, like I said, we had three different stages, right? But we kind of have four here. So we have a stranger, right? So this is when we reach out to the stranger. We put their name in here right um we may or like if you don't have the name of the person you'll just put the name of the business in here right um, maybe i'll zoom in a little bit so that you can see it right the so name the, pro the link to their profile all of this you're going to have from the list that i'm going to give you right this can be for either facebook or for instagram right and then you're going to put the date that you sent the initial message okay and for track you just need to put whether they if whether you're reaching them on facebook or instagram this has to be ticked or else we, we can't nothing shows up in these in these percentages here which is obviously super important okay and then the next day if they do not reply right you're going to look at all the things you sent yesterday and if they did not reply then you send them a follow-up message all this is going to be like the script we're going to give you everything like that right and if they if they still if the next day after that right they still do not respond um you're going to track if they actually saw it or not and you're going to be able to see that by like the little profile icon right so they if you if they did see it then you're just going to put where what platform it is so if they, you've messaged them on instagram and they didn't see that then you put just instagram if they did see it you put instagram under media scene if they did not see it then you don't put anything okay oops that is absolutely not what i wanted to do um 
let's fix this. Good. Um, and then for when you send this follow-up, you just want to put the date um, in month, then date, then year. So for example, it would be today is 12, 29, 23. And obviously date initiated would be the day before this. Well, this would be the day after this, right? You kind of get the idea. So if they move on, right? If they're like, okay, I'm interested in hearing some more information, then you send them the vague pitch, right? And then you move them to this stage. So you would essentially copy their name and their profile link. You paste it in here. Right. And then you put the date where they became engaged, where they became interested. And then what you want to do is turn this row orange so that you can kind of keep track of this person. Right. Um, and then obviously you want to put tracked to make sure that we can see that they move to the next stage. Right. If they do not respond to the vague pitch after the first day, right. If you're, if yesterday you send them the vague pitch and they did not respond, then you send them follow up B. Right. You're going to have all of this. You're going to put the date in in which you sent it here. If the next day they don't respond, you put the date in here, the next day 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 here. And if they still don't respond the day after the seventh follow-up, then they are considered dead lead. What you do is you turn this row red and then strike through. Okay? And that's how we know that we don't need to follow up on them anymore. Um, right. And you do that for, for all of the, for whenever they say they're not interested. Okay? Or they don't follow up. If they do move or if they respond to this in any sort of way that they may be interested, right? Um, we want to move them into the, the dialed stage, okay? So if they respond in any way, right? Like we said earlier, we are going to pick up the phone and we're gonna call them, okay? So when you call them, you're gonna put their name here, right? Put their profile name here. You just copy and paste from over here. Um, you put the date of uh, date that you called them, it says date of number given here, um, should just be the date that you called them, right? And then tracked, you just put whether they're from Facebook or Instagram, right? Same thing. If they pick up and they say, sure, let's book an appointment, then obviously you move them here, right? And you put the tracked thing. If they did not, then you just follow up with them seven times, same kind of process every single day. If they did not respond, um, then you keep sending them follow-ups, okay? Until they, until they, like after the seven follow -up. you only send them seven, okay? And then for the green right um this is just when they book so if they book on the call with you then you just put them in here um and obviously you turn track on and then you put the schedule date as well so when you see that the schedule date has passed you make sure that they've showed or not you're going to be in a group chat with the client um or with myself obviously you're going to be able to know whether they showed up or not um if they did show up obviously then you just put facebook or instagram if they are dead lead Right. So if they did not show up and then you called them and they're like, I'm not interested anymore, then they're a dead lead. If they schedule, this is what you put right after you book them in. And then following up, obviously, this is if they missed the meeting and they haven't picked up the phone yet. So you need to call them relentlessly every single day. Same thing with the cold calling, right? Let's say follow up. You message them every single day, you call them every single day, everything. You, these are, this is a warm lead. You need to make sure that you're getting the bang for your buck here. Okay. So. And then once you move them, right, once you move them to this stage, right, you make sure the row is purple. Once you move them to the, that's pink. Once you move them to the green stage, you make sure they're green. And once you move them to the yellow stage, you move, make sure they're yellow. And they're like, okay, these are the money that we made. Um, we do not need to, to follow up anymore or do anything with this person. They're done. And they, they showed up to the apartment. Okay. And then mission complete. So that is how you track everything i'm going to add that column that allows you to put that phone number for the cold calling sheet okay and i'm actually going to add the phone number that you can put into the dm as well so that you can see their phone number from here so you don't have to go look for them in the lead list and then do that right okay i'm gonna make this easy um and you're just gonna put that information here and track them as they go in terms of the workflow um how you actually want to manage these people um what i would say is when you start doing your facebook dms you go through all the replies that you've had Okay, and you do what you need to do with them. You need to move them to a different stage. You need to cross them out. Um, after you do that, you do all the follow-ups that you need to do, right? So you follow up for all the people that you didn't didn't respond to yesterday. You follow up for, follow up for all of these guys. Um, you follow up for all of these guys, and you follow up. You don't follow up because, um, but you make sure you send up your follow-ups. You make sure you do your replies, and then once you do all of that, right? Once it's all tracked, then you begin to send the 50 new Facebook messages that you need to do. And for Facebook specifically, make sure you add them as a friend before you message them or like their page if it's a page, right? Or else you're going to go straight to spam, okay? I've tried it before where I didn't send a friend request before I sent a message. If you do that for like a week, you're going to get sent to spam every single time and it, this is not going to work. Um, 
So make sure you're doing that. Instagram is different. Obviously, you don't friend people, but it's you can follow them too. That will really help. Um, but that's pretty much it. Okay, it's a little bit complicated, but you're going to get the hang of it very, 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 very quickly. I promise you that. Um, and then obviously, if you have any questions for myself, always let me know on Slack. Um, send me a loom of what you don't understand, and then I will help you understand that. Okay. So that is pretty much it. And I'll see you in the final video, which I believe just goes over the entire day, um, what your schedule looks like, um, and everything like that. So I'll see you in that one. All right. So this is going to basically just walk you through the daily schedule, right, of, of actually how you want to go about and do this. Um, this is all mandatory. So make sure that you're following this diligently. Okay. Um, and the nice thing about this, right, is that you are going to be done before five. Um, and obviously you're going to be able to start a bit earlier and you're going to be able to finish a bit earlier right so that's a nice thing okay so our daily meeting is at well our, our first daily meeting is at 7 30 eastern time okay so we're going to essentially go over some questions that you may have had from the previous day right we're going to review some of the calls that we had yesterday um, and we're going to get some goals right identify some bottlenecks make some changes right um for the day um and essentially kind of just recap how yesterday was and how we can do better today okay so the actual work starts at 8 a.m right you're going to call eastern time leads um we're going to try and hit 75 people in an hour right it's very possible um you're making calls every 20 seconds with the closed power dialer right so if you do one hour which is 60 minutes times 60 seconds right divided by 20 seconds a call each you can theoretically make 180 calls um however right some percentage of those are going to pick up so 75 is pretty safe maybe you do a little bit less than that but you you want to be doing the point here is you want to be working the whole time right you don't want to, you want to be as efficient as possible okay and that's why we have the power dialer as well and then when 9 a.m rolls around you call the cst leads when 10 a.m rolls around you call the mst leads and when 11 a.m calls around rolls around you want to call the pst leads okay then there is a lunch break at noon right obviously if you want to have lunch like here or here or here it doesn't really matter okay um but at one, right after you're done your break, respond to and track the Facebook DM replies, right? Send 50 new Facebook DMs um, and then respond and track the new Instagram DM replies and then send 50 new Instagram DMs. Um, and then we'll have our end of day meeting at 4 p.m. OK, so itinerary, we are going to just discuss how everything was, discuss potential bottlenecks, like did you, was your pickup rate low? Was your pitch rate low? Whatever it was, right? We're gonna discuss that. And then um, we're gonna go ahead and obviously make changes so that we can kick the next day off. I'm gonna scroll all the way back up. So that we can kick the next day off strong, right? Um, and then obviously do a much better job. So that's pretty much it. Um, if you have any questions about this, obviously let me know in the Slack channel, um, which you should have joined already. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much it. Um, so continue through the training document and um, obviously let me know if you had any questions about any of this. Right, so there you have it. That is the whole video, right? That explains the process of how we actually get dozens of appointments every single day um, by leveraging our setters to actually execute these processes on our behalf. Um, and obviously we pay them very well um, because it helps us grow the business a lot, right? So if you don't have facilities to do that right now, that's completely fine, right? You can execute this on your own and you're still going to see amazing results for your business. You're going to sign a lot more clients, okay? So if you want to see that resource um, that I was going through, that document that I was going through in the video, you can access that in the description below. Also, if you would like to join our free Facebook group, we go over a lot of valuable content in there. Um, there's also going to be a link in the bio where you or in the description, not in the bio, in the description where you can go ahead and, um, and join that. And one last request. If you enjoyed the content of this video and this actually helped you out with your agency, um, feel free to subscribe so that you get notified every time I upload. That way you're going to be able to know when there's more free content to be able to to leverage and obviously implement into your agency to start making some more money okay all right other than that get off youtube and get the fucking work